Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made the world's best collard greens. Okay, let's go ahead and jump to our ingredients. All right, we got a whole bunch of stuff here. First off, I'm not using neck bones or uh, ham hocks or any of that nasty stuff. I'm using chuck roast. Okay, I love me a good roast. Next up, we have our organic minced garlic. I love garlic. I put garlic on everything. All right, we got our vegetables. We got our red pepper. Um, I love red bell pepper. I actually use a lot of it. <laughs> um, I'm using three fourths of an onion. We have our bacon here. This is a thick cut bacon. And then uh, for some flavor, we have our chicken bouillon. We're using some light brown sugar in this recipe. No, my greens are not going to be sweet. It's just going to enhance the flavor, okay? We're going to go ahead with our chicken broth. If you don't have chicken broth, you can just use extra chicken bouillon. Um, I like mine a little bit spicy, so I'm going to be going in with some red pepper. So I'm sorry, red crushed peppers. Um, we have our regular black pepper. We have our iodized salt here. Um, one of my secret ingredients for my greens are the apple cider vinegar. I'm going to be using a lot of garlic powder, a lot of onion powder, and then lastly, we're going to have our collard greens. I'm only using one bunch of collard greens. Like I said, it's just me for the holiday season this year, so I don't need a lot. But these leaves were freaking massive, you guys. Like, one bunch was more than enough greens for me. Okay, first we're gonna go ahead and start to cut up our roast. Um, this is a really big roast, so I'm not using all of it. I'm only gonna use a small portion of it in the greens because I don't want my greens to be like overwhelmingly meaty. I just want it to be like an accent. So I'm only using like one of the smaller corners. And here I'm going to be cutting my piece and then I'm trimming most of the fat off because I we don't need all of that fat, okay? Yeah, I'm actually going to be using the rest of this roast for another recipe that's going to be coming, you know, a little bit later on down, but we're going to focus on this one, okay? So now I have the pieces that I'm going to be using and I've already trimmed off as much fat as I could. So now I'm going to go ahead and start to season my meat. Okay, I season it before I do anything. All right, so I'm going in with some garlic salt first. Do a light layer on both sides because I want my meat to have extra flavor. Okay, the name of the game is flavor. Quick side note. Make sure you guys have watched your meat before you started seasoning anything. I forgot to mention that in the beginning, but I washed my meat before I started seasoning, all right? So let's go ahead and jump into our next spice. We're using a lot of onion powder because I love me some onion, right? Make sure you're coating both sides because we don't want our meat to be bland. After we've added our onion powder, we're going in with some garlic powder because this is what's going to be the secret ingredient to your meat. This is what's going to give your meat a lot of flavor. The garlic salt, that garlic powder, that onion powder, and that pepper. That's what's going to have your meat tasting super bomb. Lastly, you're going to go ahead and add a nice helping of our ground black pepper. This is going to give that meat a little bit of spice. It's going to help all that taste come out and stand out on its own you need to add the black pepper, okay? Not a lot, you don't need a lot of it, just a little bit will do just nicely. This is really gonna bring out the taste in that meat. Now, 
now that I've seasoned my meat, I actually put that in the refrigerator to sit and marinate while I go ahead and do my collard greens. Um, these have already been cleaned and scrubbed in my salt water solution. Now I am cutting my leaves down the middle because me personally, I do not use the stems. I just use the leaves. So I stack them together and then I make about two and a half inch cuts. Um, well, basically strips. And then after I get all of my strips together, I put them on top of each other and then I cut little squares that makes my uh, greens go by super, super quick. Some people don't like nice uh, cut collard greens. Me, I, it doesn't really matter, but just for the video's purpose, I like to make nice, neat squares. But at the end of the day, they're gonna wilt and you're not gonna be able to tell the shape anyway, but I stack my leaves together. I cut two inch, maybe two and a half inch strips I put my strips on top of each other and then I cut little squares. That makes the cutting process go by super fast. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to our onions and bell peppers. Like I said, I am using three fourths of an onion, but I'm not slicing them myself. I have this little gadget. It's like a slap chop type of thing. And if you guys don't have it, you're missing out. It makes dicing vegetables so much faster. I bought this on Amazon for about $15 and I have never looked back. It has been the greatest $15 I've ever spent, but you do need to cut your onions in like manageable sizes. So I did a half. Put that in there you know slapped it you know gave it the beat down you know show them who's boss <laughs> and then i got my diced onions Now that I have my onions nice and sliced and diced, I'm doing the same thing to my bell pepper and I am using three fourths of my bell pepper again. Um, you have to cut the top off and then you have to de-seed your peppers, okay? The inside of the pepper is not edible. You're not supposed to be using that. You're only supposed to use the outside. Now that I have everything nice and sliced, I am heating up some vegetable oil and I put this on maybe about medium high heat. And I'm actually going to go ahead and start to cook my roast. So you need to brown both sides. And you're kind of like searing the meat. But since I don't have an a, a iron cast skillet, this is the best that I could do. And you just want to make sure that you're browning both sides of the meat. Don't burn it. You don't want to um, overly cook it as well. Since these are fairly small pieces, it does not take a lot um, for me to cook these. So you just have to be very, very careful. I'm only wanting to brown the meat, not fully cook it, because once you put it in the greens and you have it sit for a long time, it's gonna be overcooked.
so here um, I feel like my meat is where I want it to be it's brown on both sides it's still pink on the middle so this is perfect for me because it's gonna finish cooking inside the juice of my greens so you want to go ahead and remove this and then you're gonna go ahead and add in your bacon like I said this is thick cut bacon and it's about five strips and I'm using my meat scissors to cut them in fairly small pieces maybe about um, a half an inch uh, thick and I go ahead and cut up the entire bag well I only have like five strips and then I'm gonna go ahead and fry those I want them to be extra crispy I just wanted to show you what they were looking like so far. Um, they're nice and crispy. They're not quite done yet, but I just guys wanted to give you guys an update on what it looks like. So my bacon pieces are almost done. Um, I want them to be a little bit darker than that before I add anything else. So I'm gonna allow these to cook for another three minutes. When they are a nice dark brown, they look really, really crispy, that's when they're done. That's when I want to throw in all of my other stuff. Now, I'm going to be cooking everything together. I'm not getting rid of any of that bacon grease because I need all of that flavor. I'm just going to go ahead and throw in my diced onions and diced red bell pepper. Oh my god you guys this smells so freaking bomb like you guys need to be in my kitchen right now because i am serving up all types of smells today this is super bomb so i'm gonna let go ahead and let all of this cook together um i want my onions to be softer than they are before i go in and add my garlic because if you add the garlic in too soon your garlic will burn and we don't want that So once my onions have gotten semi-translucent, they're not all the way clear, but you know they're not all the way super opaque white either, that's when I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic. I am adding about two spoonfuls of garlic. Like I said, I love garlic and I love onions, so I might be a little bit heavy on it, but you can get by with just one spoonful of garlic, okay? Mmm, my God, this is smelling so bomb. So once all of my veggies have begun to cook down, I'm going to go ahead and start to add my greens. I'm adding in three bunches, aka three handfuls at a time. I want them to wilt and to shrink. I don't want to overload the pot and add too many greens at once. So that's why you add three handfuls at a time. You wait for them to get a darker green, for them to get smaller, for them to get softer before you add your next bunch. And you're going to keep doing this until you've basically used up all of your greens and they're all in the pot. Once you've basically fried all of your greens together with the bacon, the onions, the bell pepper, and the garlic, look at that. Oh my God, that just looks so bomb. Look at that color. Look at that color. Tell me that doesn't look good already. It's not even done yet. Oh, child, let me, don't even get me started. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Now we're going to add our, um, our juice. I'm starting out with one can of chicken broth, and I'm going to go ahead and pour that entire thing in there. That's going to give this green a lot and a lot a lot a lot of flavor okay once you add in that one can you're gonna refill that same can with just regular water okay so it's one can of chicken broth one can of water you're gonna pour that in this will help dilute dilute your, your mixture and so you can have more juice like everyone loves the juice of greens especially my greens so i can't have enough juice okay 
go ahead and you're gonna mix that up together and you're gonna bring that to a slight boil. While you're waiting for things to heat up, you're gonna go ahead and start to add your spices, adding some more flavor to these greens. I'm going in with some garlic powder. I'm adding a hefty amount of garlic powder there. And then I'm gonna be moving on to my onion powder. And I'm gonna be putting the same amount of onion powder in there. Yes, hefty serving of onion powder because I love onion. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, my greens have so much flavor, it's ridiculous. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start to add my ground black pepper. And if I had to guess how much I was putting in here, I would say maybe a tablespoon, maybe half a tablespoon, three fourths of a tablespoon to be sure. <music> Chef's tip, you guys always wanna taste your food while you're making it. Um, that way you know if you've added a little bit too much of something, you need a little bit more of something else, always taste your food. Next, I'm going to be moving on and I'm going to be adding my apple cider vinegar. Um, that just gives it a little bit more oomph. I would be scarce on the apple cider vinegar depending on who you are making your greens for because not everybody like the vinegar taste. I do. I use about a splash maybe two splashes of the apple cider vinegar but again you have to cater to the crowd that you're going to be cooking for bringing on more of the flavor we're going in with our chicken bouillon um i'm using about two spoonfuls of the spice um they do have like little cubes and i guess i would use the equivalent of two cubes but this one is just like a loose powder so i'm just sprinkling it on I mix it around, add a little bit of salt, I taste it. Do I need more chicken flavor? I add some, if I don't, then I might just add a little bit more water if I feel like it's too strong. For this recipe, I added just enough. So again, that would be like maybe about two spoonfuls or equivalent two cubes of the chicken bouillon. Um, as I stated earlier, if you do not have chicken broth, you can add extra bouillon cubes. So. If you didn't have any chicken broth, I would say add one more cube or two more cubes of the bouillon cubes, okay? As you can see, I just went ahead and tasted my food and it turned out pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my next spice. I am using a little bit of the light brown sugar. Again, you have to be very careful on how much sugar you're using because some people don't like sweet greens. Um, mine is a little bit in the middle. Um, it's not too, too sweet, but um, it does definitely add something different and you can taste it um, before and after I added the brown sugar. You know, sometimes you might find that you put uh, in too much of one other thing and you have to go back. So um, there is a lot of back and forth on spices just to make sure you got the right taste. Um, I did end up having to put a little bit more apple cider vinegar um, in my greens for this one. I added a little bit too much uh, brown sugar and it, it changed the flavor. So I just added another splash of my apple cider vinegar as well as my other spices like the chicken bouillon, the um, onion powder, the garlic powder, and the salt. I just went ahead and added some more because the flavor just changed a little bit too much for me.
after a few more taste tests, um, I was really satisfied with how my greens were tasting. So I went ahead and added some crushed red pepper just because I like I, I like my food to be spicy. Um, normally I would have added some red hot, uh, I think it's Frank's hot sauce or no, I'm sorry, red rooster hot sauce. But for video purposes, I wanted to keep things kind of neutral. I, I only added a little bit of the crushed red pepper um, just to give it a little bit of heat. Normally I like a lot of heat, but I just went easy this time. So now that my collard green broth is exactly to my liking, I'm going to go ahead and add my roast. Um, I decided to add my roast at the end because I want it to sop up and suck in all of that flavor. It's going to be cooking for another 45 minutes so that will allow my roast to get nice, soft, tender. It'll break apart and it'll just be so damn good. As I said, I'm gonna let this cook for another 45 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up. And by the time it's done, it's gonna be perfect. You know that your greens are done when the actual color of the green has changed. You're looking for a nice, dark, foresty, almost moss-like color. When your greens are that color, that's when you know they're done. I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys an update on my greens. This is how they're looking right now, but they're not quite done. They're still not that dark foresty color. So I went ahead and let them cook for a little bit longer. The next time I show you my video, they're gonna be done. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, yes, look at that. Look at all that flavor. Do you see the color of my broth? When your broth is that color, that's how you know your greens are packed full of flavor. Do you see the color of those greens? They're nice dark foresty almost moss like that's when you know your greens are done you see my roast it's shredded it's falling apart it's tender look at that bacon look at that garlic just look at all of it it is so bomb you guys you guys need to try this recipe at your next holiday dinner hell you could do it any time of the year this recipe will have your family begging you to cook it every year that's been my video. Go ahead, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Check out my mac and cheese video. I got a honey baked ham. Don't forget my candy yams. And I will see you guys in my next video.